Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Zulu's Painting Show. Today, we're going to be doing a little bit different painting than we have been doing for a while. Uh, up until now, we've been mostly painting very biological, sort of organic looking uh, things. Today, we're going to dive into more of a sci-fi look. Sharper angles, flat surfaces, I'm going to be playing around with that a little bit. And to add to the mix, we're going to be playing around with painting the color white, which is an interesting color to paint, uh, to, to say the least. Um, however, to be able to do this, we're going to have to introduce a couple of new products. Well, specifically, what we'll be painting. Uh, today we're going to be painting, and I'll talk a little bit more about it uh, in there, uh, but we're going to be painting some Battletech miniatures. Now, because white is a particularly finicky color, uh, we're going to be also introducing a wet palette. Uh, sorry, open the box a little earlier. This guy. So wet palettes uh, are def definitely fall into that category of the uh, want and not a need. Um, as we discussed in, in uh, some of the very early episodes, there's a difference in painting between want and need. Uh, a wet palette is definitely something that is helpful. Having a palette is, is I would say, a need. Um, but having a wet palette is not necessarily. Now, what you might ask, uh, is a wet palette? Well, that's an excellent question. A wet palette is uh, simply a surface you can keep your paint uh, that is going to have a, a, a le level of moisture in it. Uh, the easiest way to achieve that is by taking a, a sponge or a bunch of, um, what are those things called? Paper towels, uh, put them in a surface that can hold water, and then over the top of that put a piece of parchment paper. Now, if you've noticed, the what I've described are things that you can grab from your household items. Um, so you just grab a, a sponge, a bit of parchment paper, and like a Tupperware container, you can make yourself a wet palette. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to go for the fancy, nice wet palettes. But the thing about the fancy, nice wet palettes is they're sort of pre-made. All of the steps are taken care of. Um, and a lot of times the container that they're in uh, is, is just a little bit more compact, a little easier to use. This particular one uh, that I have, let me go ahead and grab all the stuff out of it. I've kind of opened it already. I'll reassemble it. Ah, so uh, the wet palette itself uh, comes with a, a little... Uh, elastic strap on that. Sorry about the audio. Um, uh, it's a pretty small profile uh, to it. It's got its case, uh, its lid, uh, on top of which you have your sort of uh, brush carrying case if you're looking for a new place to hide your brushes. A lot of times I'll have my brushes just at my paint station, uh, but if you're going from place to place to paint, that is useful to have. Uh, inside this particular one, um, it uses uh, this uh, it's sponge uh, here, it's a, a piece there, and then of course it has the parchment paper. So nice about this particular one is it comes with another sponge, which is nice. Um, and a whole bunch of uh, uh, sheets that are pre-cut to be the right size. Um, <laughs> I've definitely got to the point where I'm cutting my own uh, parchment paper, so this is going to be a nice uh, sort of addition to my supplies. So I'm noticing that this sponges are different. <laughs> One sponge is uh, much more rigid than the other. I'm not sure how that will affect our painting, uh, or if it will at all. Ooh. Yeah, let's go ahead and use this. This sort of mushier sponge. I know, um, I've been uh, up until now using a Privateer Press uh, uh, wet palette. So, I'm kind of more used to that more spongy sponge. So, what, you might be asking, does a wet palette do? And if you watched uh, Ethan's painting stream, uh, you would have seen him using it already. Uh, but essentially what it's going to do is going to keep your paints sort of moist. Uh, it's going to make it so you don't have to worry as much about uh, adding water to your wet palette. Uh, or, sorry, <laughs> Huh. I looked down at it. I said what I saw. Uh, you're not going to have to worry as much about putting water into your paints. You'll it'll sort of thin naturally on the uh, the paper. Um, so I've I've had you know four hour sessions of painting and the paint has managed to stay uh, nice and wet the entire time. Whereas on the dry palette, I've had paints uh, dry before I've even gotten done with them on the model. This is important because uh, with our white, we're going to be doing many thin layers uh, of of white. Uh, which if we're, if we end up uh, having our, sorry, I'm adjusting my 
tripod. Uh, if we have our, uh, our paint drying out, that's going to make things that much harder. White is already sort of a chalky color as it is, so this will just make the whole process a lot simpler. Now, let's go ahead and switch over to our top-down camera so we can get this wet palette raring and ready to go. Um, as you can see, it is currently not terribly wet. In fact, it's pretty dry. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of parchment paper out. We're just going to add some water to the palette. I'm going to try to not soak all of my equipment. <laughs> In hindsight, I probably should have just done this beforehand. Oh, goodness. Get that water in there. There we go. It's riveting television, I'm sure. Uh, go ahead and put your little piece of paper in there, and then that's it. You're ready to go. I could have done that off screen, and you would have known exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> That's still working. I don't know. I got a little bit of a storm rolling in. I'm not sure if that's affecting my internet or if this is a computer problem. You get to enjoy the fun of me trying to um, troubleshoot as I go. If you tune into the shopping show on Fridays, you'll get to see that uh, much more, but with a peanut gallery um, uh, giving me trouble the whole time. All right. So, uh, as you can see, we've already got some models on uh, the table. Yeah, that frame rate has really died. That's okay. So, this is going to be what we're shooting for. Let me go ahead. Got great quality today. Um, so, as you can see, we've got nice, clean white, but we also have a good bit of sort of dark lines around it. So we're really going to try and work on getting smooth, flat white without a lot of brush strokes on it um, and with nice, dark sort of surrounding areas. Oh, I figured out what the problem is. The computer's running out of power. <laughs> I unplugged it to move it and then didn't plug it back in. <laughs> I wonder it's struggle bus on its way through this thing. There we go. Hope that'll make it run a little better. Oh. <laughs> All right, so back to the model. Uh, so this is what our end goal is going to be. Well, not precisely. So the end goal is going to look a little more something like this guy here. So the fun of having such sort of a, a beautiful and uh, and stark white is to then sort of muddy it up because all of those rust streaks uh, are going to pop even more because they're on such a white surface. Um, creates a lot of really in uh, a lot of visual interest. Uh, creates a very striking model on the tabletop and can make uh, a really fun sort of project to work on. So today we're going to be working on this rifleman. Um, we're going to be having fun with this guy. So you'll notice that it does already have some stuff on it. Now what we're looking at here um, is this has been hit with a white primer. And then uh, the whole model has been hit with a black wash. Uh, you can use your other color washes if you uh, are using your army painter set. Uh, you can use your dark shade. Uh, I used null oil for this one because I like the, the very sort of the black and white look. It really works very well for this guy. Um, so yeah, step one to go from, uh, this guy to this guy, uh, sorry. Yeah. To get to this guy, uh, your first step is just getting the whole model covered in an even coat of white and then, uh, putting your wash all over the model. Now for these guys, uh, I just, uh, I hit them with a white primer and then hit it with the wash. Um, and then what we're going to be doing is on each of these panels, we're going to build that white back up to this very sort of uh, very clean white uh, from this uh, this sort of darker color. So yeah, 
I think let's go ahead and just get started and I can talk a little bit uh, as I go. So we're going to grab our matte white. Oh, there we go. Got to remember where, I, where I'm focused. Give it a good solid shake. Nice solid shake. And what I'm gonna actually do, since I have some room here, let's see if I can get this palette on camera. Oh, it's really big. The workspace is not huge. There we go. Yeah, that'll be nice. Paint over top of that. Uh, we can. <laughs> well, I'll I'll do a do a fun reveal uh, in between during, in paintings. That'll be fun. So take your white, and you're going to put it on white, and this is just the most visually interesting thing you could be doing. Um, now, if you have, like, your Citadel pots, you can pull them uh, from the pot. We'll uh, be getting to that a little bit over here from these guys. Uh, but that's once we get to the cockpit. For right now, we're just going to be looking at the white. We're just going to be having, having some fun, painting some panels, just having a good time. So for this one, because I'm going to be doing a fairly large uh, uh, parts, pretty large parts, I'm going to switch to the regiment brush. Wet, Pre-wet the brush to make sure I'm not filling the uh, uh, the deepest recesses of the brush with white. Just get a little on there. And then we're just going to dive right into it. Let's go ahead and start with this. This gun, I think, will be a good one because it's got a lot of individual panels on it. So it'll be pretty easy to to go over that and then yeah we just start putting on putting on our color well yeah i guess white is a color now for that first bit if you'll notice you can still see a lot of those darker colors through it um and that's why especially with whites you're gonna have to do many thin layers because uh, white does not cover a lot. So you're really going to have to just commit to the multiple layers. Because white is one of those colors that's very easy to just really show all, all of the, uh, the brush strokes. I don't know why I started at the very smallest panels. This maybe wasn't the best idea, but that's okay. Trying to make sure I'm got a good angle for you guys. Head isn't in my light. So one of the things I actually really enjoy about painting white is because you do end up doing so many sort of layers on it. And like that little that little guy that pokes out there is, is sort of a great example. As we start putting more more layers on that, it's going to stand out a lot more from the surface kind of around it. And even just with that first coat there, we've already got some some real real contrast and colors starting to pop up, which is just sort of exciting. But that will become even more so true as we continue to put layers on. And I think so when it comes to sort of your your sci-fi models and your 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 more sort of inorganic miniatures. Um, make sure that we're in a good spot. There we go. You're going to be playing around with these sort of panels. You've got these sort of large flat surfaces um, with fabrics, with uh, with plants, with woods and things. You have a lot more sort of leeway to let the the modeling be sort of what what drives you in some ways whereas with these sort of uh, metal panels you've got a you've got to sort of you know you got to make big flat surfaces interesting so this is actually a great example of where we're getting into some of the the nitty-gritty so what i'm doing here with the white is i'm bringing it this lighter color i'm bringing it sort of up to these lines but i'm not touching it because I want to promote that sort of shadow between those two spots. So I can, I'll basically, so I've done, I've done that first coat. Now when I go in for a second coat, I'll go more just for this. Oh, sorry about that. I'll go more just for the center of, of this spot. That way it really emphasizes that center of that panel. 
And as I start getting more of the, the parts of it, it'll it'll less look like it's sort of sitting out. Oh. <laughs> What's funny is what you guys are seeing is actually a little bigger than what I'm seeing. Uh, and for some of these smaller par parts, it might might uh, behoove you to uh, to move to a slightly smaller brush. We're just getting started with this this bigger one, though. So now we're going to head back to this top shoulder. So it's had a chance to dry. So now we're just going to do another thin coat. And one of the reasons I really enjoy this sort of way of painting it is because you can really play around with the darkness of your like your gradation is really just a matter of how many layers are you willing to put on so for instance this sort of i keep bumping the camera i'm very sorry uh, i'm also going to move my focus out just a little bit so i can work about here ish there we go yeah um so like this area in between uh this little this little white guy here i mean the whole thing's white but so this one, I'm I'm probably gonna leave that that kind of I guess dark gray isn't necessarily the right uh, right color, but I'm gonna leave it a little bit darker around the edges, so that small point kind of pops out a little bit more. And one of the reasons I, I prefer doing it um, starting with this sort of dark color and everything and then bringing the high spots to a much lighter uh, value is just because it's it's a matter of um oh goodness sorry i don't adjust the old thing there um when <clears throat> because white doesn't cover very well if i were to have this whole thing be white and then try to just do the lines uh in here it, i'm gonna have to worry a lot more about getting those getting the dark onto places I don't want them. Whereas because I'm doing so many thin layers of white, even if I get a little bit of white where I don't want it, um, I just put a, a one less layer on it in the new spot. Like going back to here, this sort of in-between area. So the first coat, I really made sure I got kind of close to the edges, but these subsequent coats, I'm just hitting the very center. And so you can create some really interesting value change there. I gotta make sure I'm in the right thing. So yeah. Also, unfortunately, my camera has a rough time with very light colors. So we're probably not gonna spend like. I'm probably just gonna go uh, do this today because I think trying to spend too much time on the white, I'll be talking a lot about a concept that you can't very easily see. Um, and I think. Yeah, let's see. So, so that's we've gotten started on that on that arm, and the let's try to do an, one more coat on the top of the uh, top of that gun there. But as you can see, we're already already really starting to get some some interesting colors, <laughs> some interesting uh, differences. So yeah, let's get this guy one more time. Yeah. Nice bright white. Yeah, because a lot of times the tendency, is, especially with white, is to try and just really cake it on there to get that uh, that coverage. So it might not look like much, but let's go ahead and look at that other arm. So you got that there. And then you've got that there. So really just picking out each of those panels. It's really bringing, bringing that value to the forefront. Uh, and I, look, I guess the way, the best way to think of it is it's like we're doing the kind of layering we've done before on other, other parts, but instead of, uh, adding white to our paint, we're simply adding more layers of white. So this guy is going to be a great example because you got kind of a rounded surface, which is a little bit more interesting. So we're going to, we're going to really put a lot of white on here. We're basically going to cover, oh, let me make sure I'm in the right spot. There we go. Basically, you're going to cover this whole sort of 
dome here with our first layer of white, leaving, of course, a small bit of that gnome-oiled color down there at the bottom to really sell that, that kind of shadow look. So we've got our first layer. And now normally, if we were doing this on, say this was going to be blue, we would have started with our base color. We would then put, would put our, our layer color of blue on top of that. Then we would have lightened up our blue and then gone uh, and done the sort of top part of the cylinder. And that's kind of what we're going to do. But what's interesting is, is the more layers of paint you put on, the lighter it becomes. So now, uh, and you can kind of see the line on this guy here. Let me see if I can adjust the old, the old guy here. So, uh, yeah, you can kind of see it there. So that top part is a very light white. You've got then a slightly darker white, and then you got your null oil down there at the bottom. And that we can exaggerate that just by putting more layers of the white on, but you want to make sure that you're constantly putting it in a sort of a smaller amount. Sorry, not smaller amount, a smaller sort of place. I think what's kind of fun is is painting white is essentially the the sort of basest fundamentals of playing around with that sort of layering technique. Um, I was watching some videos recently of a, of a guy who was uh, going over uh, sort of non-metallic metals, and um, the process he was using to get started was essentially this, where he took a black model, uh, well, similar to this, he took a black model and he just brought uh, the, the parts where the reflections would be up to, up to white. And so, and... So yeah, you just, you get a very, it's less getting tricked by the colors and more just letting the value, the, the change in, um, in value be the thing that's really driving the look. I actually, I remember there was a, when I was working for Games Workshop for a bit, uh, just in the retail shops, don't worry. I wasn't corporate shill. Um, but, uh, I, um... I was, there was a guy there that was doing some painting, and I think he was he was doing some some competitive painting, um, and he was passing on wisdom that he had gotten from his instructor, uh, who had who had said, "Take a picture of your model in black and white, and you should, if you've done it right, have colors from black to white." Because I think what can what can happen sometimes when you're painting is you can get sort of distracted by the fact that you've got you know you've got your different colors, um, and especially oh, sorry, I gotta try and find a good focal length again. Ah, here we go. Uh, especially when you have a whole bunch of colors all sat next to each other, uh, the model itself can get quite busy. But each color itself can be very flat, and you don't you don't want flat colors because that's when you start losing your detail. Speaking of losing detail, so we've got got an interesting spot here. So right here, there's a sort of interesting diagonal line. So I'm gonna really want to bring that diagonal line up, but the only way I can do that is by just making it more more white. So I'm just gonna I'll keep lightening it up. And because this is particularly boring, I'm not going to do the entire model. I'm just going to kind of go over the principles, talk about kind of how how you can do it. Now, these guys, ooh, let's 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 do some very little uh, things. So again, it comes back to that. I don't know why I keep coming back to the things. So one of the things that I found is the easiest for getting particularly small things. Um, so I'm going to switch to the character brush, um, but we're just going to use the side of the character brush because trying to get the accuracy of getting my bristles on those specific points is a lot of trouble. So what I'm going to do is just come along the side here. 
There we go. And by using, letting this sort of upraised part of the model be my, uh, be the thing that grabs the paint, then I can just sort of drag it along the top, and I've got some very, very nice little spots now. I'm going to keep it with the, with the character brush, just because we've got some sort of small points I want to pull out. And again, we've got that nice sort of rounded surface. Actually, I'm going to head back to a bigger brush. Now, I <laughs> part of the reason that I like doing this for Battletech is because, you know, on average, you're going to be having uh, a group of, um, you know, four, two to four models, maybe six, if you're playing uh, a lot of Inner Sphere mechs. Um, essentially it's a, it's a much smaller model count, so you can really let each model sort of be its own hero and have its own story. And that's why this mech here, uh, it has no rust, while well, this one is covered in rust, because this guy is, uh, he's, he's got a, he's got a story, he's got a, he's got a personality, like how did, why is he clean? Well, that's because he's clearly one of the commanding officer's mechs, um, so he demanded that they take the time to put a fresh coat of paint on his mech. And the same is very much true of like your your RPG minis. Like each each miniature can in itself be a character. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> this is a fun one. So if you noticed, uh, I have scraped off some of the paint on the top of this cylinder here, the, the barrel. Uh, that was because I didn't wait until it was dry to try and apply another layer. Uh, that's one of the other things that can add to the level of tedium of painting large bits of white, but it's true of any color. It's just so much more obvious when you're dealing with uh, a color that is so very thin uh, and that doesn't have really a lot of sort of contrast or or the like. So... So yeah, just letting letting your paint dry. We try to put another layer on is especially important especially when you're doing these these paints that you do need those many layers to make work and with something like this you really just gotta you gotta take your time little little brush strokes you don't need to you know need to go too ham with it you can just get little little brush strokes Little guy. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> I'm getting impatient. Yeah, white is such a fascinating color to paint with, uh, just because yeah, it cre it's, it's it's a really interesting experiment I, I i thoroughly have been enjoying it so far um as you can see i have uh these two and then i've got another i think four that i've finished so far in this paint scheme um sorry my hand's going a little bit to sleep gotta get some blood flowing again also you'll notice that i have been on occasion cleaning my brush despite the fact that I haven't been changing color and that's because I don't want my brush to really gum up um, with every color that is uh, a worry but with this one that I need to be so sort of clean and precise with the color I want to really make sure my brush is um, isn't too messy oh man I need to leave that top of that barrel alone so this is going to be the fun one so one of the things to kind of keep in mind when you're when you're doing these is to think of where where you have shadows and also for this one in particular um what i could have done beforehand is take in a picture of the model um with uh with a with a little bit of a sh uh, shine on it so i can kind of see where the dark spots are the light spots are but what I'm doing with this particular paint job is making is it's less about exactly where the shadows are and more about making 
uh, really making each of the panel, panel, panels, panels sort of pop out. Uh, speaking of panels popping out, those two little guys under there are calling to me. They're saying, Rob, you need to put a little bit on there. At the same time, that also looks like a giant pain because they are very small. That's a easy way to get some, some paint where you don't want it. We're going to come back to those. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to decide whether or not those, those are, are worth digging into. See, and what's nice is that first dollop of paint that we started with just a little bit ago, still perfectly moist, perfectly ready to go. Oh, I've got to, oh, look at those leg panels. We've got to do them. We've just got to, it's so satisfying, especially getting that first coat on there, really seeing them jump out. Oh, yeah. And again, so like this sort of under part here, uh, I'm going to probably just leave that that sort of uh, darker color because it'll, the contrast between the two colors will be so, so very nice and stark. A lot of, a lot of Tony Stark today. Sorry, that was bad. I, I apologize. Speaking of which, I do want to paint a mech in a sort of Iron Man color scheme. I had a, a I had a javelin uh, that had been I got it second hand, and it had been painted in an Iron Man scheme, and it was very loving. They really, they really, they really tried, but unfortunately, it was one of those ones where it's just like get some paint on the model so we can slap it on the table and ha not have it look gross. And don't get me wrong, I have definitely done that. Uh, I have, I am, I am not, not saying that that's not perfectly acceptable, um, but it was just, it was not the level of quality that I would have enjoyed looking at on the tabletop on a regular basis. So I had to get stripped, I had to get repainted, um, and it is currently sort of um, at this stage because, of course, I'm doing it as part of the Comstar because. Sorry. The reason that these guys are all painted white is because there's a faction in Battletech called Comstar that has um, a bunch of white uh, color schemes. So uh, I painted up one of them that color, and I, it was just such a such a very interesting and fascinating look that I was just like, man, I wanna I wanna keep doing this. Uh, also, this technique, uh, if you are playing uh, Star Wars uh, in Legion? Star Wars Legion. If you're doing Stormtroopers, there you go. You got yourself some Stormtrooper paint jobs all ready to go. Uh, and again, this is not the end-all be-all way to do to, to paint white. There are many different methods, many different techniques that can be employed uh, to really get yourself some some very pretty, pretty whites out of it. Um, I think it's oil wash. I'm still still kind of getting familiarizing myself with some of the things, but you, uh, it'll, it'll go into those, those recesses and, and, uh, areas much easier. Um, it really darkens up, uh, your, your guys. Uh, I think the, the guys that do like Gundam miniatures a lot of times, like Gundam kits will use that, uh, stuff. So yeah. In a good, good chunk in there. And yeah, it's just it's just a lot of single layers, a lot of thin layers, a lot of just accepting that white doesn't cover very well, but that's okay. You're gonna use that to kind of use that to your advantage. You're gonna use the fact that white doesn't cover very well to really get a nice sort of variation in color. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've done enough of the the whites there. What I'm gonna do now, you'll notice it's got this little this little cockpit up here. 
Um, it's got a nice, a nice domed, rounded look to it. It actually also has some, some, uh, some bevels, some sort of flat surfaces and lines. But one of the things that's very fun to do is a thing called jeweling. I think it's called jeweling. That's what I've, that's what I've uh, heard it referred to as. But essentially, what it is is, um, you're gonna make it look like it's a reflective glass surface. Despite the fact that it is in fact not, but rather is paint on plastic. So for this one, we are going to stray a little bit from our um, War Painter uh, starter uh, set, uh, mostly because, I, as I've already done these before, I have my color scheme picked out, so I am very sorry. However, this process can be used with any paints. Uh, even if you only have a single paint, you can do this uh, just by adding some whites into your darkest color, and then you'll bring it up from there. So I'm going to be starting with our, uh, for these ones, our... Oh, contrast is hard here. Zenith, pur Zenith Purple? Sorry, Zarius Purple from the Citadel line. So, I mentioned before that getting the paints from these pots onto the wet palette is a little different, and I will show you what I mean by that now. Um, do I want to go... No, I'm not ready for the... I'm not ready for the character brush. We're going to keep with our... You know what? I'm actually going to switch to our starter brush from the starter paint set. So what I like to do, just because I don't want to fill my bristles with uh, paint, um, is I will actually use the back of my brush. I'll just grab a little, little paint off there, and then take your brush, and sort of just wipe it onto your wet palette. There, got our purple. Uh, and to start off with, I'm just going to cover the whole cockpit with uh, our our darkest color. And let's see if I get you in a good position for that. And as you can as you can kind of see, the the purple's already covering better than uh, the white has been. And this technique, you can use basically any color. Oh, <laughs> so this is essentially what we're going to be doing. Um, I'm, I'm going to be using some other colors for this one, but essentially you're going to start with a particularly dark color on the top. Oh, this is funny. I didn't even do this on purpose. Uh, you're going to start with a particularly dark color on the top side, and then coming down, you're going to do slightly lighter colors and lighter colors until you get to a very light color here at the bottom. Um, if this had been intentional, that would have been perfect. However, it wasn't. So, but that's, that's going to be kind of our end result, but just with a little bit of purple. So <laughs> that is, that is, that is funny. I like it. So, I think there's almost kind of instinct kicking in to come at that kind of that angle. Oh goodness. Some tricky angles in here. And again, we're gonna just use the, the con we're gonna use the, the sort of contours of the model to help keep my brush from going places I don't want it to. So I'll place the brush against the surface and then sort of slowly push it towards where I want it to go. I'm very excited for this particular one because all the rest of these guys' uh, cockpits are relatively small by comparison, whereas this guy's is just a big old, big old splash of color. So I think it'll be very, very fun to have that sort of, you know, you've got a model that's almost entirely white, and then just in the dead center, they've got this big splash of color. Now, normally... It would not make sense to have your cockpit be particularly bright because then you're going to be more likely to have people shoot it but hey cold shots are very hard to do at battle tech and what's nice is because uh the rest of the model is already white uh i'm not having to to fight with the other colors in the undercoat uh, it's just the white. 
again though, we want to make sure that it's a solid color. So several coats is the best. Thin coats. Several thin coats. Let that dry for just a second. Clean out the brush, make sure it's all nice and tidy. Um, if continuing along this sort of battle tech route is something that you guys would be interested in, um, go ahead and share this uh, video. Uh, make sure we can get as many views on it as possible. Um, largely, what I paint is determined by what you guys are interested in watching. Um, so, last week we did some batch painting. Sorry, not last week. Last week we were sending out boat tons of um, uh, cards, Time Spiral and Pokemon. Uh, but the week before that, uh, we were finishing up our batch painting. Uh, we were finishing up a, a set of these guys. Um, uh, before that, we were playing around with some contrast paints. We got this, uh, or actually not that this horse, sorry, this horse uh, painted up. Uh, and then of course we started going over some basics uh, with this guy, uh, going over you know our, our different techniques of dry brushing, layering, uh, all that sort of thing. You've heard me mention a couple times some other uh, techniques. That is where we discuss that. Um, so there is a whole back catalog for you guys to, to wander in on. Uh, but if Battletech is something you'd like to see more of, I would love to paint more uh, to, to sort of go over more of this. Also, my white balance seems to be fighting with me a little bit. Let me see if I can pretty this up for you a little bit. Oh, oh, it's gotten very green. Oh, no. Let me grab the old slider. Oh, <laughs> we running into some technical issues. Please hold. There we go. That's a little better. Yeah, purple looks a little bit more. Well. Unfortunately, while I have more experience painting, I don't have... Oh! Is that better? Well, it's much better. Um, don't have as much experience uh, making cameras do what I want them to, so... It's still not the right purple. Eh, it might just be what it has to be, because my camera can't detect the right colors. Yeah, because that's real off. Oh? That looks much better. Okay. All right, so we've got our base color in there. Now we're going to go over to our uh, our lighter color. So this is just a lighter purple. Oh, it's still a bit more blue than I like it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so we're going to go with our Gene Stealer purple. Don't forget to shake your paints properly. We're then going to just steal out a little bit of that purple. And again... If you don't necessarily have all of the colors ever, uh, you can always just take and add a little white to your color, lighten it up a bit. In this particular case, I wanted, I had, I had the colors already, so I'm going to use. Uh. Yep. Now at a. Now, so what's going to be interesting is I have a couple different surfaces here, and I kind of want to play around with that. Let's see if I'm in the right spot. There we go. So now we've got this sort of flat here. There we go. And again, we're just going back to that multiple thin layers principle. Get 
getting a little bit of uh wow i do not know what's going on with my color i'm sorry guys is it my saturation is too high that could be it now it just looks green well as long as the, the colors are consistent so the principle remains it's always a an interesting fight especially because white is one of those colors that will mess with cameras a lot um just big white flat surfaces um makes it so that the camera says what are you doing stop please so Okay. I think honestly the the kind of like the pre-color we had on there was almost better. Hmm. Well, I'm going to experiment a little bit more with the uh with the camera and see if I can't do a better job. We're not done yet. <laughs> but I'm not not terribly pleased with what it's looking like. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white and mix it in with our with our light purple here. I want to, I'm not going back to this white, so. Okay, if I get a little, little purple in there. Really lighten up that purple. Oh, I filled this brush with ink. Okay. So that's one of the nice things about a wet palette is because it's going to keep your paints moist for your entire session, uh, you can mix up some other colors and you don't have to worry about them going dry halfway through. So if you did have a couple different projects they were going to work with a custom color on then you would still have it for later all right oh that's still hitting that wire This one's a little different because it does have that kind of odd angle to it, but the principle remains. Oh man, <laughs> you really see the different the different parts of it. That is not uh, it's not what I'm looking for. So. Is to be able to get that line to not be there, we're gonna go ahead and grab some of our original purple. That's just a little bit of the white in it, so it's that kind of transition color between the two. And it really moist up the, the color. Um, and then we're gonna kind of try to just blend those two colors by by painting our new color sort of on the line between the two. Doing this on a larger surface to begin with might have helped uh, with it, but what can you do? Okay. Right. I'm trying to fade those two colors into each other. Hmm. fighting with me you have to watch me struggle through this hmm well now the final sort of uh, touch and I'm gonna be honest it looks a lot better uh, in person than it does on camera I'm gonna have to work on that my my lighting, I think, is is ultimately my problem I'm running into. So, oh, you can get, yeah, it looks a little better from that distance. 
Uh, now, the thing that really, I think, helps the whole thing pop is grab just a little bit of your white. So your light is going to be coming from sort of this side here. Um, so it's dark on the top and then it lightens down. The idea being that the light that's coming through is making it shine on the bottom here. But you got to have a little bit of reflections up at the top. So you just put a little, little dollop of white. Sometimes put two. There we go. So now it has, it looks like it is a piece of reflected glass. Okay. All right, well. I'm getting sort of low on time, but let's let's kind of let's, let's talk about what we've done so far. Let's let's have another another kind of look at what we've done. And I like to I like to use uh, this sort of side as our example. So it's it's not it's not bad. You've got you've got some some points a little darker here than uh, maybe you might like, just because that was where the wash is pooled. Uh, all the grooves in the armor are are definitely darker. Uh, you can see that, but when you switch over to this side, ooh, it just looks so much nicer. You get that nice sort of nice bright color. Let's see if I do this. Oh, <laughs> I just need to turn back on the automatic uh, thing. No, oh, see, that looks that looks better. Man, my white balance is all over the place. Um, but uh, but yeah, so. And what's fun about uh, about white is essentially it's it's really forcing you to to look at the different values of your of your paint. You can't just like well I'll start with this color and then move to that color. Um, I mean you can and you should, but this really it's it's really fun to kind of look to see like you know what happens if I put a couple more layers on. What will that how will that look different? Uh, you know this this part here is a great example of that where that first uh, that first layer really goes uh, closer to the edges, but then all the subsequent layers are going to be more towards the center. So the center is going to be the lightest part, whereas it's, as it goes out towards either side, it gets sort of darker. The same with this top sort of cylinder here. Um, and I don't know if the, the camera is really catching the, a lot of the radiation, but well, that actually looks pretty good. But yeah, so basic principles, many like uh, uh, coats, uh, making sure that you stay to the center of the panels, um, using all, all the normal layering techniques that you would use. Uh, but instead of adding white to your color, you're simply adding more layers of white to lighten up your color. Uh, lots of thin, thin, thin layers. Um, and yeah, just like... These, this this kind of under part here, I'm going to leave that, that kind of nice gray color. Make the focus be those armor panels. They're going to get a couple more layers. But even then, when I'm doing the layers on these panels, I'll probably keep the white mostly to the top half or two-thirds. Um, so that even within the white, you can get a slight sort of uh, uh, fade to a slightly darker color. Um, yes, this is this is trouble, but I'm going to turn that into, into battle damage. Um, if you guys are interested and have you found this uh, fascinating, the next thing we could do is take and kind of go over some of the principles to get this uh, kind of rusty look. Uh, play around with uh, with rusting up a uh, perfectly good paint job, uh, taking something that looks nice and beautiful and sort of dirtying it up. Uh, if you think that these models look awesome, uh, and I, I agree with you, they do look very nice, uh, we do have all of uh, the models on our website uh if you you can either go to the links in the description you can uh, pick those up there we do ship to basically everywhere um oh I'm gonna refocus that there we go um we do ship uh the product if you're looking for uh to get it sent somewhere you can pick it up in store if you're in the area um and yeah if you have any questions feel free to send a uh uh, to if you go to, what was it? Sorry, you go to zulusgames.com. If you go to um, the community tab, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a link to the Discord. There is a BattleTech uh, uh, channel. I'm I'm on there pretty much as much as I can. So 
Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any things you would like to see specifically, uh, feel free to hop in. I have a backlog of videos, uh, of other painting videos, so if, if you want to, if there's some techniques you want to have a, have a gander at, I may have already covered them. Um, but until next week, you stay safe out there, have a lot of fun, enjoy your painting, um, and yeah, I'll see, I'll, I'll see you guys next week.